Well friends, Trisha and I are back again today because we have gotten so many mama questions. If you're new to Trisha and I, I'm Jay Morell Stewart. This is Trisha Goyer. Between us, we have 18 children. We've been moms over 40 years. Yes. What else is it? I We've guess been homeschooling. Been homeschooling. A gazillion years. Collectively. 45 yeah, years. 40, Am yeah. I doing my math right? <laughs> so, yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> and I guess we could combine our marriages. And we've been married over 51 years. Yeah, because I've been married so, almost yeah, 30. 30, and I've been married 21. So we just, like, we're pulling our resources and our experiences here. Trisha's been visiting me with me this weekend. We've been talking about and getting so excited for her brand new book. It's called The Grumble Free Year. Wouldn't that be amazing? And if you see all those precious people on the cover... Those are all the people that the live people in Trisha's house. house. She's got, let's see, should I do your intro? Let's let Trisha introduce herself. <laughs> I keep, introduce yourself, Trisha. Yeah. I'll drink my coffee. Well, I've been married to John for almost 30 years. Hi, and mm -hmm. then we have three biological kids that are um, 30, 27, and 25. Mm -hmm. And then we adopted seven kids. We have um, one that we adopted from a birth mom and a private adoption. And then we adopted two sibling sets from foster care. So they were two and five and we adopted the, the first set and now they're nine and 12. Mm -hmm. And then oh, wow. we adopted four girls um, that were between the ages of, okay, I gotta think about this for a minute, 11 and 14. And now they're between the ages of uh, 50, almost 15 and 19. And, and then so, in that sibling set, there's twins also. Yes, and we have so seven you have twins. Two 16 year olds. Two 16 year olds. Yes, also. Yes. She's got two nine year olds. Yeah. Two, of two nine year olds, two 16 year olds. Yay! And then my grandma, who is 90, grandma. lives yeah. with us. And so, yeah. Yes, wonderful. So, my newest book is The Grumble for a Year. And it's just our family's goal to try to go <laughs> a year without grumbling, which, you know, it's impossible, but we really worked on grumbling less. We wanted to um, just have more contentment in our hearts, more gratitude, more um, thankfulness. And so, mm -hmm. it's things that we tried that didn't work, and things yeah. that we tried that worked, and just our process, and then tips for you to help stop the grumbling in your yes. house. And they can go to, even now that the book is out, thegrumblefreeyear.com. The, yeah, thegrumblefreeyear.com. Yeah. There's yeah. lots of resources And there. again, on Instagram, we received a bazillion questions. And they, we have compiled, let me show you my whiteboard. Yeah, we have, a lot. <laughs> we've compiled a whiteboard list of all the questions and they seem to fall into two and a half main categories. Mm -hmm. We have at least 20 homeschool questions. We have a lot of parenting and behavior questions. And then we have work at home mom slash routine slash marriage. Yeah. Broad, a little bit broad. Yeah. So, Let's hit the homeschool. Okay. We don't know how long this will take us or when this will end or if this will be 12 videos or if it's going to end in five minutes. <laughs> I, don't, I think it'll take longer than five minutes. I think it'll take longer, <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to go down this list of homeschool questions. So the very first question is, why do we homeschool? Mm -hmm. And then moms along with that wanted to know how to get started and our best tips. Kind of lumping that all together. Okay. So I wasn't sure that homeschooling was even legal. I remember when my oldest son, who's now 19 and a man off doing his wonderful man grown things, when he was two, I had met some families at our church down in Hampton Roads, Virginia, and they were doing this wild thing called homeschooling. <laughs> Actually, I can say a, a seed even before that is when Travis and I were first married, we went to a birthday party. This is digging way back. We didn't even have kids yet. A birthday party for one of the, that one of the men that he worked with was having for his little boy. And that little boy was five and the mom was telling me she homeschooled. And I was like, I, this ignorant <laughs> young woman myself was saying like, well, is that even legal? <laughs> you know? So just know we've all been there and we've all worked mm -hmm. through all the questions. So then once I was a mom and I had a two year old and then I had to start thinking options like, where is he going to go to school? We didn't think we wanted to put him in the public schools in the area where we lived. Families make their educational choices for a variety of reasons. Some of my very best friends have their children mm -hmm. in public school and private school. And I'm so thankful to live in a country where we as parents can choose what's best for our children. Yes. So I'm just saying my personal experience was not a fantastic one. And we all make choices based on our experiences or have that flavor, our thought process. So when Jaden was two, I was swirling all that around, what our options were. And the families I had met at the time were homeschooling and that got me reading about mm -hmm. it. I read um, 
Let's see. James Dobson had a book called Bringing Up Boys. Yes. And in That's that book, one. yes, in that book he mentioned, and again, new mom with a two-year-old just reading about boys <laughs> since I had one. He said if him and Shirley could do it all again, they would have homeschooled their children. And so I thought, okay, if James Dobson is even talking <laughs> about homeschooling, I really should look into that. So then when I mentioned it to my husband, thinking it would be just another wild idea, he said, well, of course we'll homeschool our children. So I didn't deal with my husband not being on board. It was like the Lord just confirmed it and we've done it. And so that's how, I guess, I don't know if I answered their question. I guess the why. The why. We, then we can jump See, in Trisha will help me stay on track. Aren't you <laughs> excited? That's why we homeschool. We homeschool because the Lord put it on our heart. It's been the best choice for our family. Mm -hmm. And so, Trisha. Trish, yeah. Now, Trisha started homeschooling 10 years, 15 years, 10 years before I even. Yeah. I was in high school. Yeah. So, yeah. There we go. That, that <laughs> I was asking. A little old. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I no. could have homeschooled you. <laughs> Be my mommy, Trisha. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but you, you have more experience. Yeah. 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 So we so. started homeschooling. We had um, friends at church, mm -hmm. and I really liked their teenagers. And, you know, and I was the teenager, teenage rebel. And I like how you said, like, our own personal experiences kind yes. of impact us. So even though I'd grown up going to church, um, by the time I was a teenager, I was not doing what I was supposed to. I ended up pregnant as a teen. And so... And I, you went to Weed High. And I, oh, I went to Weed High. I was a cheerleader at Weed High. Google it. There's a place in California in the high school called Weed High. Yeah. Okay. Cheerleader yeah. at Weed High. <laughs> um, and so seeing those teenagers... They spent time with their parents. When we would go mm -hmm. over and have dinner with them, the kids would be hanging out. They'd play with my kids. I'm like, these teens are different. Mm -hmm. Like, and I really liked the relationship that they had with their parents. I'm like, I want teens like that. So they homeschooled. They just spent all day together. They built that relationship. The siblings had mm -hmm. close bonds. And I just, I like that idea. Um, and then when, it, when all this was going on, Corey was actually in preschool and I would go volunteer two days a week. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like hurting children. And this was just this preschool experience. So I know there could be all the, No yeah. judgment. <laughs> no we're, judgment. <laughs> we're not judging you for anything yeah. you're doing, but we do have to share our experiences. So you're going to yeah. hear that. So <laughs> when, we were, when I was at preschool, they were just kind of hurting kids here, hurting them there. Mm -hmm. um, they'd have crafts and it was like the adults like were kind of doing it. And the kids basically to just get it done quickly. And I thought... Mm -hmm. They're not even learning, they're just kind of being moved around in the little groups. Yeah. And so I thought, well, if I spent time with him, um, so I had Corey first and then I had Leslie and Nathan kind of quickly afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so it just was, um, we're going to just start this and do it. And we went to our very first homeschool conference and the whole place was filled with vans. Like, yes. Vans, vans, <laughs> get your like, van. That is one of our questions. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's so funny. So we just started mm -hmm. doing it and that's why. And so... I have another thing that happened though, because when we adopted kids, the older girls had gone to public school. So all they knew was public school, and they were in at one in fifth grade, two in sixth grade, and one in ninth grade, and I'm like, we're gonna adopt you guys, and then we're gonna homeschool you. Surprise! So, yeah. So, and all they were used to public school. Mm -hmm. um, they were open to the idea when I started explaining it more and showing them in the curriculum, that's really got them excited with all the books we're gonna be reading. Mm -hmm. um, but for six months, we couldn't um, homeschool while they were in foster care. Mm -hmm. And so I was taking them to school and I just, it was a lot of drama, a lot of learning stuff from other kids, a lot of stuff the teacher said that would be against what I would say. Right. So I got a kind of glimpse of that, right. um, just having them there. And then I remember that when we, we adopted them, the next day I went in and withdrew them from school and we started homeschooling and it was like, wow, we could hang out with mom all day and she's reading to us. Yes. And I'm thankful for nurturing. She, nurturing <laughs> Cause I didn't have all those years to bond with them. Right. So even my sophomore, when we did read out loud, she was just sitting there and I'm like, mm -hmm. You know, of course, it's part of the story, and she's learning from the read out louds, but it was also the bonding and the yeah. relationship that we had um, together to have those hours and hours. Otherwise, she'd be at high school all day, right. and she'd get home and See be doing homework for hours, yeah. and so we we had to build that bond. And so um, we've done it from the time they're little, and then even with adopted kids, you know, like them jumping in, and now they'll say, Mom, I had a dream that you made me go back to school. Oh. And it was and a they nightmare. Lived it, so they, and they, know. they lived it. Yes. So they really enjoy it's just a gentler 
learning environment right. that we just enjoy spending time together. So that's why Trisha and I homeschool. Yes. So the next question that goes along with that is moms want to know how to get started. So the first thing I would say, of course, this is all U.S. based, is homeschooling is totally legal mm -hmm. in every, every state, state in America. Yeah. There's a wonderful organization called HSLDA. You do hslda.org and you can look up the state laws mm -hmm. for every single state. Education is regulated by the state, so every state has, I'm sure your laws in Arkansas are different than our laws in Virginia. You follow along with those laws. Yeah. Usually every state also has their state umbrella organization. So in Virginia, we have H, um, I'll give you the, the URLs, HEAV.org, which is Home Educators Association of Virginia, if I'm doing that correctly. Yes. That sounds and right. they have a <laughs> wonderful uh, homeschool conference every year in June in Richmond, Virginia. That is fantastic. We didn't go this year, but you should speak there too, Trisha. Oh, I would love on it. On your list. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> Uh, HEAV is wonderful as well, so I would just start by looking up, know what your state laws are. I would join HSLDA if you're going to homeschool. We've been members for years mm -hmm. and years, yes, and there's sir. been a few things that I've been able to pick up the phone and call, even down to having a teenager getting their, driving, their driver's license. In Virginia, it's a little convoluted, so HSLDA has a Virginia, how to get your driver's license in Virginia for homeschooling oh, PDF. Wow. Okay. And they emailed it to me and I connected all the dots and we did driver's ed at home and tested at the DMV and we did it. Good. We did it. So <laughs> they hold your hand with mm -hmm. all kinds mm -hmm. of anything legal. Um, they're just, they're wonderful. So that is how I would get started yes first steps. Yep. and then and looking then, at curriculum which i think is yeah the thing that overwhelms people yeah, there's a so lot. much and so there is a lot if you can go to a homeschool conference mm -hmm. where you can look at stuff now there's the two it, it depends you mean you might be starting when they're five mm -hmm. um you might be starting when they're in sixth grade we, we see when i speak at conferences all the different levels um, of course, we want to see things that um, our, the kids are going to enjoy, mm -hmm. but also think about what you will enjoy doing. Yeah. So if you're not going to enjoy, like, enjoy it too. reading workbooks and that kind of stuff, like I love reading out loud. Do you love reading out loud? I was going to say, you know how I love to homeschool. Yes. <laughs> All the books. So I'm, yeah. I'm a better homeschool mom if I'm doing stuff that I am enjoy. I'm mm -hmm. happier. So think about when you're looking at curriculum. Now, I think sometimes people try to do too much. They're trying to do school at home, like with mm -hmm. the public school at home. Right. And honestly, you can get more done at home because it's one-on-one -on -one with the child. You're, you're spending mm -hmm. time with them. So don't feel you have to do an hour of math, an hour of science, yeah, an no. hour of history. Right. You really don't need to spend that time. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I pull them together. So we all do history read out loud together. That's history mm -hmm. for everybody. Right. You know, so um, think of those ways and actually, I wrote a book with Christy Clover okay. called Homeschool, Homeschool Basics. Yes. Perfect. And it covers a lot of these tips about getting started and finding the right curriculum for you and uh, uh, learning styles for kids and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Everything, yeah. So if you go down the rabbit trail of Trisha's books, there's books for everything. <laughs> what do you <laughs> everything. need? What, what do you, do you need? need? You need homeschool, you need World War II history, you need Amish novels. We got, we got it. it. We got it all. <laughs> okay, so one of the best things is to remember that um, it is uh, homeschool is about relationships. So relationship, your kids' relationship with God, and your kids' relationship with you, and kids' relationship with each other, yeah. um, and that's a benefit that you can't get when everyone's spread out. So you know, sometimes if I see there's conflict, maybe with, between siblings and stuff, mm -hmm. we'll just take more time to read the Bible, to you know, do fun games together, and mm -hmm. and get those relationships connected again, yes. and then we get back in the work. So Definitely. it is a time to work Excuse on me. all those character issues, all those mm -hmm. values. Um, and it's okay to take a day to do that kind of stuff. Like right. we're having a really hard day and let's just play board games or let's just mm -hmm. go on a nature walk or something right. like that. So it is about the connections and the relationships. And I love having mm -hmm. my adult kids, my daughter lives in the Czech Republic now. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we video call every single day almost. <laughs> like maybe mm -hmm. we might miss a day. Right. Um, and then our older two sons live in town. They come over for board games, they come over for dinner. So I'm so thankful for all those years yeah. of relationships building because it's they're really we have really strong relationships now the next series of questions that we have written down on the trusty whiteboard is people want to know about college prep so how do we prep mm -hmm. them for college if that's the goal get admitted into college and I guess before that how, how do we graduate them okay so college prep so, and graduate kind of go together 
Um, so in your state, it'll have requirements for graduation. Mm -hmm. So if I, I live in Arkansas, I pull it up, it says they need this many credits of English, this many credits of math, this mm -hmm. many credits of history. Now, you don't need to have like accredited from a, a national organization. You can do your own history and your own math and your own science. Yes. You just have to keep a transcript. So I know like I have sophomores this year, um, they need a technology credit. So we're doing, we're doing some outside stuff to get them a technology mm -hmm. credit. So just keep track with whatever your state says is the requirements. And um, a lot of uh, states have homeschool organizations that they'll do graduations and so they yeah. will help you um, get connected with your homeschool organization and they like we have graduation ceremonies mm -hmm. we have all those things they actually look over our transcript ours does mm -hmm. um, we have to pay I think $50 they look over our transcript make sure everything's great but the cool thing is so I've had uh, four kids go to college mm -hmm. um, we've had two start at a community college, one start at a state university, and one start at a private Christian university, mm -hmm. and every single one of them accepted my transcript. It's there like something I made on the computer. And did they all take the ACTs before? Um, no, only one. Okay. Only one of those took the yes, ACT. Yes. So that wasn't so, even, when they went to apply for college, they had to take the college entrance test at the college to mm -hmm. see what level they're at, but they looked at my transcript, they looked at their scores because it'll tell them what level, like if right. they're at college level. Mm -hmm. um, and so then they just admitted them. It wasn't yes. a big deal at all. It <laughs> so worked. It worked. Um, and then our one for the private um, college, she, we actually did the ACT, which was mm -hmm. great because her ACT scores with my um, transcript, she ended up getting um, a $60,000 scholarship yeah. to cover well, four years. Yes. So the ACT, you do do ACTs scores if you want scholarships. Wonderful. Um, so that was the fourth child I'm <laughs> yes. figuring this stuff. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so I know um, our experience with my one that I've graduated so far is our local homeschool group that we've been in for uh, the whole 15 years. We have a graduation and they have a dinner and it's a, a lovely ceremony mm -hmm. also through Home Educators Association of Virginia. They have it at the Richmond Convocation Center, and it's huge. I mean, there's hundreds of kids mm -hmm. graduating from all over the state. So, and I know also on HEAV.org for Virginia, they have that same list of exactly the English, the math, the science is what my kids need. And I just follow that. Yeah. And check those boxes. And it is. It's like you have to do a foreign language. Like I'm telling yes. you, this is like this is what you need to graduate. Yes. So. And they, I know there's transcript services. HSLDA will basically they just type it up for you, pretty. So HSLDA does one again. HEAV. I'm sure in Arkansas, there's organizations you can get that will type the transcript. Okay, now we're on preteens. And yes, well, we just talked about the accredited. So it doesn't have to be an accredited homeschool program because right. I will get that question as well because basically when you graduate your your the state doesn't give you doesn't give you anything it's a parent issued diploma is that how it is in Arkansas? yes i think so yeah so we issue the diploma i had it printed up through hslda colleges if that's the goal take them just the same yeah we've never had any problem yeah with them. and she's done four i've only done, done yeah. <laughs> four wins so so anyway so you can rest your mind on that there's a lot of other information out there um, one of my good friends is a New York Times bestselling author. She was homeschooled and there you go. Never went to college, so yeah. it all works out. I've, I've never been to college. Well, yeah, I did like a year and a half. There I've you go. Seventy-six books. So, it's <laughs> um, next thing. So when you have preteens and they want to fight, yeah, and I don't know if they want to fight each other. Or there was fight a couple of questions or, of people that people gave us about mm -hmm. preteens and fighting and sibling rivalry. Hormones. Hormones. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm just saying, like 12 to 14, for me, after I've had six kids that age, the Wouldn't hardest turn age. Music down. Excuse me. Trisha, keep talking. The, the, the hardest age is that age because they're going from um, being dependent on you to trying to get independence and then trying to learn their own things, trying to discover who they are, and then hormones kick in. And so we have, like, one of our girls just turned 12. She was very compliant, and all of a sudden she's talking back and sassy, and I'm like, what was going on? Where did you go? And then we see, because yeah. they're also, you know, they were happy while playing dolls together, but maybe mm -hmm. one child doesn't want to play dolls anymore, right. and so a lot of more sibling stuff happening at that mm -hmm. age. Um, so what we what we talk about, my husband and I, is okay. This is a hormonal time, and we're not going to get into big arguments with them if we know that that's what's going on. It's like. We'll say something like, 
why don't you just go to your room and just chill take for a, a while? Rest. Just take a rest. And I think, do you know Melanie Young? Have you yes, I love yes. Melanie. Okay, so yes, we love, I love Melanie, Melanie Young, and their site is Raising Real Men. RaisingRealMen.com, I think is what they still yes. have. Mm -hmm. Lots of wonderful books on raising boys in general. I think they have a whole boy boot camp mm -hmm. for that age. Like if you need preteen boy help, her and her husband Hal have a lot of wisdom. Also, she talks about, and I know I have shared this with some of the men that I'm raising, with all the hormonal changes at that time, and I'm going to probably butcher this percentage, but it's something crazy like, in the preteen years, when boys get that major testosterone surge, it's like 75% more testosterone in their body during that small period of time than they will ever have flowing oh through their goodness. veins. So if you want to know why they're nuts, I mean, and I watched it with one of my boys, like at 11, he was a boy. And by the time he was 12, about to turn 13, big Adam's apple, it grew, grew another foot, mm -hmm. voice changed. I mean, it was, it was actually pitiful when you look at the pictures to see how much his physical appearance changed. And just a lot of feelings yeah. during that time. And they have all of that surging through. And I remember telling him, like, look, this is what Melanie says, okay? <laughs> you're not wrong, you're not broken. It's always good to assure yes. them that, because yeah, it's just, it causes hurting yeah. all the way around and questioning and A friend told me too with boys, with hormones, mm -hmm have them do something physical yeah. so chopping wood playing basketball going around go running, and yeah, so that helps with all the hormones yes, inside work them. It out. girls usually i'm like go take a bath go Eat relax some chocolate i was just talking <laughs> to my 27 year old because she said i remember being you know 14 15 and just i was so upset because you weren't taking me seriously because they feel everything and then no one's taking yeah. them seriously she was look, looking back I understand why you didn't take me seriously over right. some of the things, but for them, a small issue is a very big thing. Right. And so don't say like, that's not going to matter. It's not a big issue. You know, sometimes sit there and listen over their friendship problems them, or whatever. Yes. And it's a big issue to them. So, you know, just listen to them. Um, my husband will say, we'll just slide chocolate under the door. If we they're do, really yeah. <laughs> or little. Let's go um, get some makeup. <laughs> so yeah, it really is a time yeah. to... Um, not that we are gonna just let them explode all the time, but right. we, you know, just say you want to talk about it. Um, what's going on? Ask a lot of questions, mm -hmm. and often they want to share because stuff is going on. Yeah, and they need to talk about. It. And you're their person. You're their person. We, we yeah. want to be their person. That's right. You want to be there and sit and hear it all. Yep. So, then our next question is, how do we do multiple ages and multiple grades? Yes. And I know this year, even when I did my, my video on where I shared the homeschool curriculum I got, a lot of the questions were, it's hard for me to answer in the comments, but how are you going to do all the different levels of math and all mm -hmm. the different levels of writing and such? So long story short, a lot of the ways that we do it is, well, we group together for read alouds. Mm -hmm. So for read alouds, it'll be from Daniel, who's four, up to Naomi, who's 13. Zion has his own whole other big stack so i know your your girls at that age are still in your real they labs. still the 16 year olds and still listen to the i labs. some somewhere in there i gave zion his big stack of work and so now he takes his book he does his own read alouds now yeah but i'm not gonna let any other kids escape <laughs> <laughs> my 16 year olds so are doing more independent stuff than sure, they ever have before yeah, yeah and, but. and zion is super independent i mean really at 16 he could be done right you know we were going through what he needed this year and he's like well i don't need any more history and i don't need any more of this and don't need any more of that and, and it's true mm -hmm. so he's doing he's doing a lot of his own stuff um, so anyway so we do read alouds from 4 to 13 so an example and we do have some questions about finding a good routine but I think this goes along with doing multiple ages and grades yeah. whenever we we have our morning going sometimes you all know we love to get in a nature hike so just depending on how things are going and how our time's going if we've gotten some curveballs we may get done with morning chores and then roll right into our table work time but if we can and if we don't have anywhere we have to go in the afternoon so I know we can run longer we'll still go get that hour nature walk in and that helps wear down the younger grades, mm -hmm. <laughs> the younger, the younger ages. It's just good for that morning energy. And if it's not a nature walk, it could be trampoline time or I mean, outside. They're they're outside now putting chickens in their sweatshirts, walking around with chickens. <laughs> it's so really cute. run with the dogs. I mean, you know, exercise them somehow. If we can get outside, then we come back in, and I allow us some transition time because then we have to wash hands and get a drink and get a banana. What I've been doing so far 
is whenever we come back in, I focus on Amelia and Daniel first. Mm -hmm. That way they get in their school time, and I'm pointing to this end of the table because that's where they sit, and I will give my next three, they're eight and a half, 10 and 13, I will give the eight, 10 and 13 year olds, they'll have a little list of jobs to do. And so it may be doing their room, shuffling laundry, sweeping a floor, something else that needs done while I'm doing this focus time. And so for Daniel and Amelia, who are kindergarten and first grade, I'll do about 30 to 45 minutes or so of focus time. And I either, I loop their math and their reading. So one day we'll do math, another day we'll do reading. Not to say we won't get in a little reading on the math days mm -hmm. after read allows a little later, but we have our focus time then. Then I can transition them. Now remember, 30 to 45 minutes doesn't sound like a full long school day, but that hour nature walk, that counts for something. Then I transition them. I mean, they can have free play. Free play is educational. They've been doing a lot of play -Doh. So we need to make some more homemade play so we get the colors back. <laughs> hours like five hours just hours and hours of play-doh heavy play-doh times going down once i have daniel and amelia working busy with that little activity then i roll through the next three and so they they will get out their books we're using master books this year for our book work and they math time little homeschool bell rings get out your math and i just move between the three help them as needed then we do our language and then we do our history. Now we do a lot of history through read alouds, but also this year with master books, I thought it's just some good basic and has writing assignments mm -hmm, with it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, that will get us doing some history writing. So we do all three of those. I do about an hour and a half or so. I just, I like to figure 30 minutes in my head per subject. Obviously you can get done sooner or you can take longer, mm -hmm. but I kind of do a block schedule in my head. Um, so I roll them through that, then let me think. Okay, so then with our science and apologetics, so the last 30 minutes, I loop those. So one day we'll do science, one day it'll be, they just had, I wasn't planning on doing an apologetics curriculum, but the catalog got me. Oh, so, yeah. That <laughs> sounds really good. I'm like, yeah, hmm. I'll show it to you. It's yeah. all based on the answers for kids' books, oh, and it, it's really nice. And yeah. again, it has more writing, and we needed to get some more writing in there. Yeah. So we'll just loop those. So that's every day, math, language, history, and then we loop science, apologetics. So that's two hours. Um, meanwhile, Daniel and Amelia, as I say, they've been out with their Play-Doh. Then we roll into, we'll have a lunch break, and then we roll into read-alouds. And read-alouds, we go through everything, which Trisha will tell us more about. We'll do our Bible, we'll do history. We just finished Old Yeller really quick, so we'll get some fiction in there. And we're usually reading four to six books. Some days certain books take over and it's like, okay, we will only do this book for two hours. Uh, but I try to, in my head, I always think, cause you're like, well, how do you read four books at a time or six books at a time? So when I look at my watch, again, it's all up here, but I'll look and I'll think, okay, if I can do 20 minutes per book and then that will end up being several chapters. And then we transition to the next and that's how it works for us. Another question I know that I'm gonna get with this is where's Benjamin during all of this? Yeah. <laughs> so where's the two year old? So he's the only one technically not homeschooling, the homeschool baby. So when we go out in the morning, I mean, he's already been up running around on that hour nature walk or when we're doing trampoline or doing chickens or dogs when we're outside, he's getting his exercise too. So by the time we get in, he will sit with Daniel and Amelia a little bit. He's got a little notebook and some crayons. It doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't last mm -hmm. long. So he'll, he putters. Okay. <laughs> so they're doing his, their things. He's still puttering. And usually whatever I transition Daniel and Amelia to, Benjamin will, will hang out for a little longer. And so some days he'll do an hour of Play-Doh. He'll go back and forth, back and forth between us. But at some point when he fizzles out, Meanwhile, during all of this, Zion is set up on our couch up there with his two tables and all of his books and such. So Sam, we've got a lot of eyes. Yeah. A lot, lot, lot happening. Some point he fizzles out. Usually by read aloud time, he's down for his nap. Yeah. So that's how we do those two to three hours of read aloud time. And that's the other thing. When he starts to fizzle out, I don't let him go down for that nap yet. I will then deep secrets here, hidden truths. <laughs> I will then put him in his pie chair and then we get some Paw Patrol and have a snack and then finally. So 
Good. Yeah, that's that's our whole homeschool day. And then of course in the evenings there's we have church, we have some piano going on, we have basketball getting ready to start, other activities. So take it away, Trisha. Good. How do you homeschool? It's, mine is almost ages? like yours but flipped. Okay, okay. So this is interesting. Yes. I love it. It's but only we don't have we don't have little I was gonna say ones, yeah. I would love to start our day with read alouds. Yeah. And I think if I could, I could get Zion back in on them. Right. But because when I'm exercising the young kids mm -hmm. with energy, Zion gets high school started. Yeah. And so that's how I lose it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yes, okay, so you, you yeah. start with read alouds. So, well first of all, on Sunday I figure out I have a big whiteboard and so I mm -hmm. figure out what what the little kids need to do for their um, we do phonics, we do um, spelling, we do math, and um, just little active workbooks that they do. Yeah. And then we have our read aloud. So I write like these are the chapters we're going to be covering. And your little kids though are nine and twelve. Right? Nine, nine, and twelve. Nine, yes, nine, and when twelve. I say little not kids. four and six. Not, I'm thinking I'm not kids, doing yeah. spelling yet. We're doing phonics, but right. Okay. So For the mom yeah, who just felt guilty exactly. like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, and but see those three are dyslexic too. So yes. we are still working yes. on some serious phonics and, yes. and then reading and their own reading. So I write it on the board. Mm -hmm. The older kids, I write all their, and this covers, we do use sunlight. So it covers right from their book. It says, read this chapter on this day, we, this chapter on this day. We don't always keep exactly to the schedule, but it's a good guideline. Freedom. And yeah. when we have it on the board, um, then everyone knows like this is what's going for the week. So we start with a Bible. And so um, right now we're doing um, the book of Daniel and we have the three teens and I have our study that we do together. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're doing that. That's what the little kids are doing. Mm -hmm. So they are running around, they're getting their energy out. So first of all, everyone got up, they all got their own breakfast. They all get, have to get dressed and all that stuff. Um, but when we're doing Bible, the little kids are in the yard, they're playing mm -hmm. with the dog, you know, it's kind of the same, getting their energy yeah, out. Yeah. Then I will um, pull the younger kids in and do their Bible. So while I'm switching to Bible with them, the older kids um, will take a break, maybe start their chores. And that only takes maybe 10 minutes. So it's yeah. a, a little break for them. Um, and then we go into our read aloud time. Mm -hmm. So we sometimes have, because I, I pull books from the older uh, read out louds all like they all listen to everything mm -hmm. so they'll listen to some of the older chapter books and then the the older kids will even listen to like we're reading Pocahontas right now oh, so yes. it's, yeah. a, it's a smaller younger kids book but mm -hmm. I mean we're learning through all of it so we might have six read out loud books and um, we always start with a YWAM um, youth with a mission a missionary story I'll just get my stack I, yeah, I keep so giving this is so good. yeah so we start with our Bible study then we move into our missionary story then we move into our Read out loud. Z Zion's doing dishes. Yes, he is. Doing <laughs> and we are thankful for so that. We're not going to tell him to stop doing dishes. No, no, no. So, yes, I have. Okay, yes. Sorry. Yeah. I'm not going to read upside down. No. But and at uh, every homeschool conference, whoever sells these will have like Lots of different the ones. stack of 200 of them. These are the only ones that I have. Yeah. But they're all fantastic. They're good. And I yeah. want to get more. So we love them. They're wonderful. So yes. we do, it's probably two, two and a half hours of read a lot of time mm -hmm. with all those books. And there's mm -hmm. science in there because yeah. there might be some of the little kids' science books mm -hmm. I pull in. Um, there's history books. Um, there's all variety of oh, there's sometimes any subject you any want subject to learn. that we want to learn <laughs> yes. sometimes even the, uh, the older kids will have um, more of a um, one of them was um, how to prepare for college type book mm -hmm. so if I'm doing that type of read aloud the little ones I'm like you guys could go take a break right yes. now but we do uh, while I'm reading um, they do play-doh they do Legos they're coloring the older girls on some things I make them take notes so they do notes mm -hmm. so all of this is around the table so we'll read like maybe two books, take a five minute stretch, come back and read. And then once that's done, the big kids know the 14 year old and the two 16 year olds, they have on the board all they have to read independently um, and do independently. And they'll go to different parts of the living room or house and work on those things. Um, and then that's when I do the individual math with the younger kids. Um, and then my uh, oldest, my 25 year old son, he tutors math and science with the big girls. Wonderful. So he'll come through and um, make sure they know what they're doing and help them. And Does he move do them that along. like once a week? He kind of gets. He's them. usually there like three times a week. Okay. So he checks yeah. in. Yep. Yeah. And he'll do yeah. the science and go over. Help a mama out. Help a mama out. <laughs> yeah. And I paid yes. him to do that because it yes, is worth it wonderful. to me. That's He's right. in college. He needs money. I need Right. Help. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's. So it's how, almost like exactly like your what schedule. Travis, what, I'm sorry. What Zion says, he goes. That's how the mafia works. So yeah. That's, <laughs> yes. Yes. 
Yeah, so very similar, mm -hmm. but flipped, and that's that's just how it works for us. And so we enjoy homeschooling that way. Obviously, Trisha's written 76 books, <laughs> but we love to read, mm -hmm. and we love excellent mm -hmm. stories, mm -hmm. and yeah. we love history. And you learn so much. You do. I've story. learned so much with my children. Um, and that's, I don't even know if that's a question on here, but it's a question that just came in my head. I know I've gotten this question at some point. Moms will ask me, well, how do you teach things you don't know? That's a common. We learn. We learn. We, <laughs> we learn <laughs> along with them. We read the book. We do the project. We figure it out. So yeah, I know a lot yeah. more yeah. than when I started. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in bed. I'm like, John, did you know New York used to be New Amsterdam? And blah, 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 blah. Yes, blah. yes, and it did. It did. Yes, <laughs> so, the I'm, homeschool mom trivia. I know. We should um, do that homeschool mom trivia day. That would be fun. That would be fun. And get like a bunch of homeschool moms that have been homeschooled a long time so they would know that fact about New York. Because <laughs> you do. You learn so many obscure yeah, facts. It's crazy. <sighs> okay, so. Uh, so how long first grade? Okay, so um, a mo another mama had asked me how long would a first grade day be? So back when I was homeschooling one child, when I just had Jaden, and when Jaden was six, Zion was three, and Naomi was a baby. So I truly did just homeschool one child for a little bit. And so we set it up where really the crux of what we did was during nap time. Mm -hmm. And so if we couldn't get things done during nap time, and then that was also when I was discovering how much I loved read alouds. So nap time, when the two little ones slept, we ended up very quickly, he would project and clip and glue, and I would read to him for those two or three hours. And so with, in that time in the mornings, while Naomi and Zion, I guess Naomi was in the swing, Zion ran around, we would run through math, mm -hmm. math and reading. I always stick with very easy, especially for the younger grades. If you can get some math done, you get some reading done. Then yeah. if you can add in great stories, plus then lots of playtime, lots of time with mommy, little Mr. Rogers field trips to pick apples yeah. and the firehouse. Yeah. I mean, you've got first grade right there. Yeah. I will say when Jaden needed extra help, so if we needed to spend some more time on phonics or maybe, I don't know, the baby was sick and we weren't able to get that table work time in in the morning, I would do it in the evening. Mm -hmm. In the evening when my husband got home, we could help me with the little ones and then we might take an hour or so. Yeah. So, and really, yeah. because in classrooms, I mean, they're there all day, but there's a lot of kids and you're kind of maintaining control. And they're, not kids around. they're not hours getting seven hours of teaching. <laughs> right, they're not getting one-on-one -on -one time. And that really helped me yeah. my first, very first homeschool conference. I think they said something like, a child gets like 30 seconds of individualized mm -hmm. teaching from a teacher during a day. Yeah. I'm like, well, if I could be 30 <laughs> seconds. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, it's so, yeah. so small. Um, and I think I heard somewhere it was 15 minutes, but still, Trisha, if you're gone for a seven hour day, 30 seconds, 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm talking not, about individualized for that oh, one child. Oh, for that one child, like, yeah. yeah, eyeball to eyeball. Yeah. It's very small. So if you had a solid hour mm -hmm. with a six year old to really pour, pour through math and writing and reading, that's a lot yeah, right there. And then the read aloud times or all the other activities are educational yeah. as and well. That, and I know so. we had a question about our biggest mistakes and I think I'm gonna jump in oh, here yes. because when I was just had Corey. So and this then, is biggest homeschool mistakes. Yes. With Trisha which which ties, in, ties <laughs> yeah. in with this question. Yes. When I just had Corey and then I had Leslie was three years younger and then Nathan mm -hmm. was a year and a half younger than her. So again, it's about the same distance, yeah. you know, a, a first grader, a three-year-old and a baby. Mm -hmm. um, I bought the huge box of curriculum mm -hmm. with like 20 different things to do in a day. Mm -hmm. And so I had a sketch, this is my mistake. Yes. Like from eight to 8.15, we're doing this. From 8.15 yeah. to 8.30, yes. you're doing this. From 8.30 to 8.45, and it was all, it, first of all, it was way too much curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, I've written curriculum before for different people. Mm -hmm. um, so I know like you're, you're not in the living room with that family, it's right. just ideas. And so don't feel like you have yeah. to do every single Single thing and even with us we love sunlight I know this there's 36 weeks there I know we'll probably get through week uh, 28 weeks of Excuse curriculum me. that's because, just from all our cooking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just a lot I mean yeah. if you're gonna cover everything and so the books that we don't get to I'll use them for summer reading mm -hmm. um, so just know like don't feel like you have to finish everything but me as a mom who had been in public school who gets this big box I would be sitting there and like you need to sit still you need to pay yes. attention and then there's a baby crying and my schedule my 8 to 8 15 
it just it went just out went the door out. and I was frustrated and he was frustrated so the more I relaxed and made it learning fun mm -hmm. and really the key is we want our kids to enjoy learning and become learners yes um, and love reading and love learning about life and nature so it is about growing a learner instead of getting the work done and yes. so now with a lot of things um, instead of having them write in every answer, I'll have them tell me about it. So mm -hmm. tell me about the story. Tell me about this science thing we just learned. And so if they know it, I don't always have them write it, which a lot of kids writing sometimes is really frustrating. We do want them to write and learn right. to write, but it's sometimes it's just way too much. Or mm -hmm. color in every square, like just do the math problems. You got them. Yes. <laughs> you don't need to do all the coloring and stuff. Right, right, exactly. And, and a lot of that stuff is, is for kids in public school. When you have 30 mm -hmm. kids, you need them sitting there coloring. Right. 20 minutes or whatever so. exactly and we it's probably a, a common homeschool mom mistake because that's what I did too mm -hmm. yay we match again <laughs> so with Jaden I had bought there was one there was a we were a different church and different homeschool families there and this one family I was like what homeschool curriculum do you use and she told me the name and I ordered it and I got it and he cried every day I cried mm -hmm. every day I mean it was just like this can't be homeschooling right but within that I then I started to read homeschool mom books I read um, basically any book by Ruth B check the three mm -hmm. R's gave me a lot of freedom and it really talked about how up until fourth grade even or third grade you know you focus on reading writing math mm -hmm. as your core subjects and within all that I was so I didn't need I didn't have to do science yet. I didn't have to pressure myself with other things. We needed to get the basics down. Because everything's in cycles. Like what yes. they learn in first grade science book is going to be a fourth grade science book, eighth grade science book, and right. tenth grade science book. And like when I learned about thing. read alouds, I realized, well, we can do science through this read aloud and then going outside and catching the tadpoles. Yeah. There you go. We've it done is. some science. So I really felt like that whole first year was a struggle. Mm -hmm. It took me, and you can tell us too, Tricia, it took me about three years of homeschooling to feel like I was really doing it. Like and I that found you weren't my faking it. Like, yeah, yeah, like, that, faking it. like we know. found what worked for us. Yeah. Did you yeah. feel like it take and you I think, years? Um, and what worked for my first three, because once they got into mm -hmm. the older grades, they did a lot of computer-based stuff because mm -hmm. they were just, they could read something, know it, answer the questions, move on. And so yeah. they did a lot of computer-based learning. And so I'd be there to help them and guide them and all that stuff. But, but with these, now I have six kids. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of special needs. So read them out loud. I did do read out louds with the older kids. Because your oldest of your adopted is now in college. My oldest is so, in college. Yeah, so yeah, so she's homeschooling yeah. six, yeah. So um, I did do read out louds and that kind of stuff with that group too. Mm -hmm. But then they were able to just sit down and do their math and their whatever on the computer. Right. Which these kids, that would be a huge struggle. They'd have a hard time just reading and answering questions. Mm -hmm. So I have to be more creative on how, yes, yes. Um, how I work with them because of yes. different learning disabilities. Okay, so for our last question, it's a good one and it's one that we get a lot. It's just moms in general want to know how do you homeschool a dyslexic child? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and what's your experience? Yeah, so um, the older three, we had no learning struggles. And so I teach them something, they learn it, we'd move on. Teach them something, mm -hmm. stuff that we're like, okay, then I started, actually started homeschooling the little ones because we had had the middle ones yet, mm -hmm. um, teaching them to read. And the same curriculum that I use with the older kids did not work. We're trying to remember phonics and mm -hmm. putting blends together. And it's like we teach them one day and the next day they know it. And I'm like, what? Is going on. I, I've right. used this with three other kids and it works. <laughs> I know it works. I know it works. Um, and so we actually went and I talked to the doctor about that and she says well why don't you go and get them tested um, mm -hmm. to see if there's any learning problems and so she referred us and so it's interesting so for dyslexia they went to a speech therapist which you okay. think speech is only talking right but it's actually all processing, the processing too yeah. and all three of them are dyslexic yes. um, and they, they also two of them had vision tracking problems mm -hmm. so they actually had to go to eye therapy too okay. so it's not just the processing and the flipping and all the stuff but it's their eyes were not tracking together okay. so one was on one letter and one was on another letter so, so there's a lot of problems yeah, yeah. Um, but so for years they went through to speech therapy mm -hmm. um, and still were continuing to do that and it's like hours and she would teach them how to learn a different way mm -hmm. thankfully um, our insurance 
covered most of it. So know that if you have a physician refer you to a specialist mm -hmm. that is covered by insurance. Because a lot of moms like, I don't know how to teach this and right. I don't have a degree in teaching kids right. um, with dyslexia. The eye tracking. The eye tracking, yes. all that kind of stuff. So And so we did dyslexia with a speech therapist. Eye tracking was actually through our auto optometrist. Okay. They have a program there that helps Wonderful. them train their eyes. And so this has just been part of our day. We were having to work on eye tracking things. And I'm going to jump up for a book real quick. Yeah. Um, so, um, but overall, um, that's one thing why I do read out loud is because I can read and they can understand, but it's harder for them to read. So I could read stuff at their grade level or above their grade level that would be hard for them to understand. Now we are struggling with, um, one of our kids still struggles with read out louds. Um, even though she can read, it's part of the processing part that she struggles with. So again, I'm looking into more resources. I just found um, Trisha and Christy's oh, yeah. book. I was looking for a book on dyslexia that I have, but I found Homeschooling, <laughs> Homeschool Basics, how to get started, keep motivated, and bring out the best in your kids. So yes, that's a lot. Go, go, that down the, go down the rabbit hole and Tr Trisha's got you covered. Um, the book that I was looking for is by Mary Ann Sutherland. Which I want to get, so I'm yes, excited. Yes, so Mary Ann, Hi, Marianne, we're talking about you. <laughs> she, um, they're a sailing family, and let's see if I don't butcher her story, but I know she has seven children, and I think all of them had dyslexia. Many of her children are graduated now. She has a whole service called Homeschooling with Dyslexia. She has books on it. I will, I will link that below as well, in case I'm saying any of the wrong things. But two of her children, if you ever heard of Abby Sutherland, and then I think, what was the other one? Well, no big deal, but he was the youngest kid to sail around the world. <laughs> and then just, just that, and then I, it's like I can see his name, but I can't say it. And then her daughter was going to sail solo around the world, and her boat like capsized, oh, and wow. it was on the news, and there's documentaries on Netflix about it. Anyway, she's an expert on homeschooling with dyslexia. So we'll put those resources down below too. I was telling Trisha yeah. about her. So just know yeah. it is possible. And like my husband will say, I'm like, oh, we're still struggling with this. He goes, but we're working on it. So we're getting the specialist, we're getting the help she needs. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it would be hard if she was in a special needs classroom that right. maybe not having, you know, just the mom that's gonna sit there with her for 30 minutes and work on this thing. Right, and it's committed to her. Yeah. So, so we're gonna wrap this one up look in the description because we're going to have a bazillion links for you. We are doing several more how to get ho started homeschooling and homeschooling tips and tricks yeah. videos with our collective group experience here. Be sure to chat it up in the comments. Trisha and I will also come and hang out in the comments, answer any questions you have, and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye. Yay! Yay.